Welcome back. Well, the big lie of Russia collusion keeps on unraveling. Igor Danchenko, the primary subsource for Christopher Steele's dirty dossier, was arrested on Thursday. Special counsel John Durham charging him with five counts of lying to the FBI, the third indictment in John Durham's probe. Danchenko confessed to the FBI back in January of 2017. As you know, we've reported this many times on this program, that the dossier, which was paid for by Hillary Clinton's campaign, was bogus. It was then used by the FBI to justify spying on her political opponent, Donald Trump, and his campaign during the 2016 election and beyond. We first reported this when Senator Lindsey Graham requested then-DNI John Ratcliffe to declassify the related documents in July of 2020. And we have learned from the memo that we dis- declassified that the Russian subsource, who was American-based, not Russian-based, told Christopher Steele Here's what I've got. It's bar talk, it's a rumor, it's innuendo, it's not really reliable. And what did Christopher Steele do with that? He turned it into a Tom Clancy novel. He sold it to the FBI. They sold it to the FISA court to get a warrant against Carter Page. And what does this memo show? Then in January 2017, when they found the Russian subsource, who was in the United States, he disavowed the dossier as being reliable. The FBI knew it, knew it did a 40-page memo, but the FBI continued to lie to the court, getting new warrants based on the dossier in April and June of 2017. After they knew it was a bunch of garbage, they continued to use it anyway. Somebody needs to go to jail. Investigative journalist John Solomon has helped expose the truth about the Russiagate hoax over these years. He is the editor-in-chief of Just the News, and he joins me right now. John, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Um, Give us your reaction to this latest indictment. We're going to show it on the screen. This is the indictment of uh, Danchenko, who we know made up uh, many parts of that dossier. He did. In fact, the single most important line in the dossier that the FBI uses to get the original FISA warrant, that there was a well-developed conspiracy uh, to put, work with Russia to hijack the election, actually is a contrived statement. The, the FBI, uh, the indictment says that Danchenko made that up. He claimed he came from the uh, American-Russian Chamber of Commerce official. He never met that guy, never talked to that guy, made up the entire line that becomes probably the single most important line in convincing a FISA court to give spy authority on the Trump campaign Uh, This was a case built upon lie, upon lie, upon lie. And every time we get a new indictment, we learn of new lies. It's it's remarkable. Yeah. And every every week along the way, Sunday Morning Futures was documenting those lies as well throughout 2018 and 19. Now we've got three indictments here, John. What do you think this tells us about where John Durham is going next? You've got a great piece this morning in Just the News, zeroing in on the FBI. Yeah, so there are two sort of buckets that John Durham has been focused on. One of those buckets were the last two indictments. Did people around Hillary Clinton knowingly and willfully give false information to the FBI to cause them to proceed with the investigation? That's where you get the Sussman indictment, the the lawyer for Hillary Clinton's uh, law firm. Uh, That's where you get the Danchenko uh, indictment this past week. The separate bucket is focused on the FBI, and, and did the FBI knowingly and willfully mislead the court and Congress about the weaknesses in their evidence or the lack of evidence or the serious problems that they were alerted to uh, in this investigation. And that uh, part of the investigation is very active. Thus far, we've had a single indictment yeah. there, a lawyer who doctored uh, a piece of evidence, but many other people are being ex- examined at this moment. Yeah, I want to I want to I want to zero in on the FBI. We'll take a short break and then come back with what Peter Strzok and Jim Comey are saying about all of this now. Stay with us with more with John Solomon when we come back. Welcome back. And I am back with John Solomon. He is editor in chief of Just the News. And John, I want to play you what Peter Strzok is saying about all of this. Uh, And of course, Jim Comey has uh, said some things and appeared incredibly arrogant. But uh, Peter Strzok went on MSNBC. We know that MSNBC was one of those uh, media outlets that perpetrated this lie on the American people. Take a look at this. 
And whether intentionally or not, when you look at the balance of those pages, they have subtle dog whistles to these kind of pro-Trump conspiracy theorists. Statements like, you know, the FBI's investigation into the, on the, of the Trump campaign relied on certain things. Well, there was never an FBI investigation of the Trump campaign, unless you listen to some, you know, kind of far extreme right commentators or folks in Congress who assert that there was. But that's nonsense. Of course, John, there was no pushback from Rachel Maddow uh, yeah, to say not. that there was no investigation of the Trump campaign. Your reaction? Mind boggling. Well, listen, Pete Strzok's op opening electronic communication, which starts the Crossfire Hurricane investigation, states they are looking at whether individuals associated with the Trump campaign were coordinating or conspiring with Russia. When they put the first FISA in in October, they mentioned uh, the Trump campaigns mentioned a dozen times in the first FISA. And it, it, as I mentioned in the last segment, the allegation is a well-developed conspiracy between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and Russia to hijack the election. Of course, it was it was about the campaign. Pete Strzok's own words said it was about the campaign. He was lying the other night. There's no other way to say it politely. Yeah. And, and of course, they continue to renew FISA warrants against the Trump yeah. campaign. Uh, and they based those warrants to wiretap people like Carter Page uh, based on that dossier, which they knew was uh, false and made up. So I ask you now, what do you think the indictments will look like in the future? Do you think that John Durham is going to indict people at high levels, big fish within the FBI? Uh, there's no doubt there is uh, activity inside the grand jury right now aimed at looking at top level officials of the FBI. And it's based on this evidence. You know, we all look at the fact that Danchenko was interviewed by the FBI January 17 and disowned a lot of the things that was said to him. A lot of people say that should have been the point where the FBI stopped. But Durham has developed really significant evidence that they went, the red flags, the stop now warning signs, Go all the way back to August when Bruce Orr in 2016 came to the FBI and said, Christopher Steele is dumping a dossier on you. He hates Trump. He's hired by Hillary Clinton, and most of his information is raw and uncorroborated. A month after that, the CIA sends a warning to the, F, uh, to the FBI. This is something John Ratcliffe declassified, saying Hillary Clinton is trying to play a dirty trick on uh, Donald Trump and try to tie him to Russia collusion to get out of her email thing. Those are two major warning signs, and then all through the fall— they're keeping a spreadsheet of what's right and wrong in the Steele dossier, and it's all wrong. Can't corroborate. This is wrong. This is Russian disinformation. The FBI should never have started this investigation based on the warning signs. And I think that's where John Durham's investigation is focused right now. Yeah, and that's why in the next segment, when I speak with John Radcliffe, we are going to show those handwritten notes of John Brennan and that CIOL, that is the, uh, the, the investigation from the CIA yeah. telling the FBI they need to investigate this. The problem is that memo went to none other than Peter Strzok. So what did Peter exactly. Strzok do with it? Uh, he, he went and used it against Trump. W one other thing, I want to show you this from Jake Sullivan, because I keep making the point that those people who abused power are now back in power. Jake Sullivan was working for Hillary Clinton, and he, too, was disseminating this false information. Here is a memo that he put out from the uh, Hillary Clinton campaign saying that computer scientists have apparently uncovered a covert server linking the Trump administration uh, organization to the Russian-based bank. This is from Jake Sullivan, a statement from Jake Sullivan. He is now the head of the NSA. John. Yeah, it's just extraordinary. I mean, uh, the entire Clinton campaign back in 2016, we're in on this strobe towel, but there's so many different people that are interconnected that are trying to push this story. A guy named Cody Scherer all the way back in the spring of 16 with a prototype of the dossier. Hillary Clinton's campaign was in this to, to its neck, and it has escaped a lot of attention until recently. That's why John Duren's most recent indictments are so important. They show us irre irrefutably that Hillary Clinton was in, in, in up to her neck doing this. She, would, she and her top people yeah. were driving this false narrative to get rid of her email problem. That's what we now know from the evidence right. in the public. Right. And the FBI went along with it, did not investigate the uh, email problem, called it a matter yeah. instead of an investigation. We know that the direction from Loretta Lynch. John, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. We'll keep Thanks, following Maria. it all. Good to be with you. John Solomon, thank you, sir.